Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to colour match and create different colours in natural lipsticks using natural colourants. Now before I start showing you how we create different colours at a lab scale and how we create these starting colours for ranges and then colour match, I do want to just explain that the way we do the colour matching process is not the way we make the lipstick. The way we make the lipstick is using proper manufacturing processes. Today I'm going to be showing you how we make the different colours and colour match to create different colour variations once we've actually know the type of product we're going to create. Now you can watch my other video where I talk you through how to make a natural lipstick using natural colourants and that video shows you the process that we use to manufacture at a lab scale and you would upscale that to make larger batches but today is all about colour matching and colour creation. So let me show you how it's done. Now a couple of things when we are creating different colours. We first of all need to start with our colour palette, the range of colours we can choose from. Now here I have Nat Pure X Fine powders from Sensient and these products are all from plant sources, they're all totally natural. Over here I have some other variants we can use on top of this colour palette here and that includes some sparkle materials in a white or silver sparkle, a gold sparkle, a bronze sparkle and even some plain black iron oxide. And from these different shades and colours we can create a huge variety of different products. Now another thing you will need when you're colour matching and creating colours is scales that measure to three decimal points. Now this is really important because you do need to be able to have very fine measurements of your scales. You can't get away with standard two digit scales, you must be using scales that show accuracy to three decimal places. Now normally they come with a perspex frame around them because they are very sensitive even to air movement. If you can see as I move my hand those numbers are jumping around. Uh, if you bump your table those numbers will also jump around. These are very fine scales so you'd normally use your perspex glass around uh, these scales so that you can keep your measurements really accurate but they must be three digit scales. Now in today's video I'm not going to be using the perspex frame because I need you to be able to see what I'm doing easily but please use your perspex frame when you're doing your measurements to keep them very accurate. They need to be accurate because we're going to be working with very small amounts of product. So one of the first things we do once we've got our lipstick, we would have made a blank lipstick base and this is just the base product with mica or powder to take up the powder portion. Now the powder content of all of our different variants will not alter. Once we're happy with the way this product feels, we can put colour into it so that we can check the transfer of colour and make sure we're happy with it. And of course we just do a standard version where we don't put a lot of uh, variants into the colour we create, we're just seeing how it will transfer to the skin when it's applied and this is just a way again of checking that our base product with the amount of powder that we're going to add is going to work. Now one of the reasons we can't change that powder content is if we change the amount of powder in each stick we're going to change its hardness so it will apply differently. So when we want a lot of colour or a high intensity colour we use the colours to make up that full powder portion. Where we want a lighter or more translucent colour, we simply use mica to make up that powder portion. And that way we always remain with a constant powder input so that we have a predictable hardness of product each time. Then what we do is we create a base product missing the powder portion and in a lipstick product it's going to set quite hard. It will look something like this. We then measure out the blank base stick missing the powder portion and then we can add from our colour palette into that stick product base up to the powder portion that we want to use from the selection of colours that we have. 
And remember, if there's any spare, we make it up to 100% using mica, which doesn't impact the color we get. So let's say we want to start with a medium pink. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna start using the Nat Pure X-Fine Radish RR319. I'm going to add that into this base product and then I'm going to just add a little bit of this white sparkle here and you will see that we go from that really brilliant red to a pink tone. And this will give us some idea of how we're going to alter the shade each time. Now you'll notice I'm still missing a portion in here, but I wanna start with room to add either more of my colorant, different colorants, more of the sparkle, or of course, if I get the shade exactly right, I make up the difference with mica so that I have a set powder input. So now I need to mix and combine this until it's perfectly smooth and homogeneous color. This is the color we've got so far. Let's say we use just a little bit. And we decide it's still too dark. We wanna go lighter. So one of the very obvious choices we can do from here is either use some white, but I'm gonna use more of that beautiful silver so I get an even more lustrous effect. We can now have a look how that version appears. So you can see how it's changing it each time. Now let's say we actually wanna make it a little bit more peach or apricot tone. We'll need to add yellow. Now we've got two choices. We can either add the yellow colorant from our starting palette, or we could add one of these very sparkly mica versions here. Let's add some of this yellow and see where it takes us. We can then see the impact that has had on the color we're creating. Now, if we weren't happy with any of these, we can simply record what we've done and start with our next base and do it all again. Remember, we're really only working with very small samples at this point because we don't have an infinite supply of colors. We don't have an infinite supply of raw materials and we wanna make sure that we're creating different shades to suit the color range we're trying to create. As you can see, those small adjustments has resulted in very different color creation. So it really depends where you want to go. Just remember to use your starting palette and we work in small quantities to create the colors we want. The other thing that's really important is once you've actually done this, remember this is not how we make the product, this is how we create the different colors. Once we've done this, we then need to create larger samples from the start using the proper manufacturing process. And you'll also find one of the reasons we use three digit scales is so that we're very accurate at this small stage. Any small changes in accuracy at this very small sample stage can have very big impacts on accuracy once we get to one kilo size product or larger. So we need to take scale up steps gradually to make sure the accuracy and the color we create in this very small lab sample is the same when we scale up to larger batches. With a color palette like we have from this Nat Pure Fine range, 
we really have almost infinite lipstick color creation. They're fantastically light stable, they're from plants, they're natural, and as you can see, we can get some very vibrant colors using some very basic combinations. So with a little more time, we can create just about any color you want. Just remember to start small. We don't have infinite samples at the lab stage and anything you create in these small samples, we then need to take appropriate scale up steps to ensure accuracy and quality in larger production batches. Remember too, method is crucial and this is not how we manufacture the product. This is how we create the color variants. Also make sure you record everything you do accurately in the lab to make sure you can reproduce it in larger quantities using the correct manufacturing method later. So remember, we start with that blank base formula. You need the blank base formula with the amount of powder to get the hardness right first. Then we just add a standard amount of color to replace that powder to make sure it's got the intensity and payoff we require and maintains the required hardness. We don't want that stick breaking or crumbling. And once you've created that base, we then make plenty of blank base product so we can get creative in the lab with our color palette. And then comes the scale up and proper manufacturing step to confirm the color you've created is scalable to larger batches. Now we've created a Dropbox folder with the formulas for you and also some starting guides on inputs to create this starting palette of colors using the Sentient Nat Pure X Fine range. This will get you started with confidence and then you can just play around with other additions or variants to get the colors you specifically want to create. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure color matching is something that takes time. So if you've got a good eye for color and you enjoy creating ranges of color, then it's a great job for you. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.